cheap cars, fun cars, cars that do things you might not expect. Yes, we're back with more good news off road, on road, and beyond. Who knows? Uh, we've got some great stuff going on. I am joined, as I so often am, by my good buddy Mark from the Tesla Life Show. Thank you so much for joining me, Mark. I'm Brian. Oh, welcome to Future Raza. Mark, so some of these headlines you had the gracious nature to bring to me, and that's great because I did not see them. Uh, but I also have Brian searching for good news, it's always fun to come across good news, but it's harder to find good news lately, isn't it? We are miners of good news, and sometimes Uh, you gotta mine pretty deep to get some good news. I'm more like a a truffle pig at this point, (laughs) but I do find them (laughs) from time to time. Uh, speaking of good news, I am, uh, still, uh, I guess you would say surviving. Thank you to the fine folks uh, who support me on Patreon or on YouTube or on X, uh, all the good ways you can, you can do a one-time thing on, uh, pay, PayPal. It's in the description, or you can use my Tesla referral code to get a thousand dollars off. If it's your first car, very exciting. You get a thousand off for the first 10 people. I've already had two referrals. Thank you guys so much. Very fun stuff. Awesome. So this is some good news. You found this one. The pros and cons of UK's cheapest electric car, half the price of a mini electric. Oh my gosh. Half the price of a mini electric, which mini electrics fairly expensive, but half the price. It's got to be a good deal, right? It has it to does. Be. Now I saw this and I was like, well, that looks pretty nice. And then I scrolled down and went, oh, well, <laughs> hey. You know what? For 15,000 pounds, which, uh, by the way, unlike the Hummer, is the price and not the weight, uh, this is pretty, I mean, for 15 grand, I guess more like 18 grand with the exchange rate, that's a reasonable vehicle. And I don't know the correct pronunciation of this brand uh, because I've only heard it said out loud by James May, uh, who calls it the Dacia. And, And I don't think that's right. It might be Dacia. I don't know. Tell me in I'm the comments. I'm going to call it Dakla. <laughs> That's D-A-C-I-A, Dakla. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but for 15,000 pounds, that's not bad. It's half the price of the Mini, which, as you said, is kind of pricey. And this is made in Europe. I forget where. I want to say, I don't remember. Hungry? Romania, maybe. I don't remember where it's made, but it's Eastern Europe, uh, last I heard. Maybe this one isn't. You can let us know that in the comments too. It does say you're going to have some pros and cons here. Absolutely. Um, It is, you can go all the way up to 36,000, I guess, but um, it's great for short journeys and praises its refined, refined powertrain, which is great. That's what you want to hear on, on a new vehicle. Well, let's, 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 let's face facts. You're not going to get a premium vehicle at a price like that. That's just not going to happen. What you're looking for is a, a lower end market vehicle that <clears throat> will sacrifice a little bit on the range. It'll sacrifice on the little bit of an interior niceties that may or may not be there. But um, this is, this is something that opens up the value for others to get involved with an electric vehicle that currently they could not because the prices are in a different, a a different area for uh, people to buy. Absolutely. You'll know if it's for you or not. And for a lot of people, it doesn't matter how nice the car is. If you can't afford it, you're done. That's it. You're out. Uh, So that's, you know, good news. Uh, This is another one. BRP unveils its first Can-Am brand electric motorcycles. Promises more to come. Exactly. BRP, uh, uh, the the nice thing about this article is that this is another manufacturer that has not been making electric vehicles and has now decided to throw its hat in the ring. And they have decided that their expertise has been previously in motorcycles and three-wheel vehicles. And this is their first foray into electric vehicles and they believe they can make it work uh, with the uh, current technology that's available to them they're going to start with the two-wheel motorcycle and uh, start to sell them and again just like zero motorcycles and others that got involved with it this is a legacy motorcycle maker so they do have some experience with the motorcycle already 
their experience now is going to be to try to make the electric drivetrain as best as possible and have as long as a battery as they can get into the vehicle while still being profitable. And um, I hope they will be successful because this will open up the market again to other people that enjoy motorcycles and would like to have an electric one. This will be another contender into that market. Now, what I love is, you know, this is a dirt bike and it's uh, and we've got BRP in the name. And I thought that was kind of funny. Do you know why? Why do you think BRP was kind of funny? Because that's the sound that motorcycles make, except <laughs> except this one doesn't. <laughs> yeah, there's no brap with this motorcycle. There is at no all. brap. There is no brap. There's a little bit of whining, which is what I do anyway. So, I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> So, so while we're talking off road, let's go crazy here because some of us don't want two wheels. Aerial E Nomad Concept previews oh future goodness. electric off roader. What a beast! What a monster! That oh. is a crazy looking man, all wheel, four wheel drive dune buggy of sorts. It's going to be a screamer. Do you know anything about this company, Aerial? I do not. Oh, you're in for a treat. This is their previous street legal cars, not street legal, but production cars. They're track cars, but you can buy them. You can have them. And I think at one time you could go out to the factory and help them do final assembly, which meant it's technically a kit car. So you could say you built it yourself okay. and, and, and license it. But these are real cars and they're, they're super lightweight and they had like a turbo Honda V6 in them. So they were just ridiculous. These were the these were the kind of cars that would just eat up tracks alive. <laughs> Look at oh, the gee. gentleman's face from the G Force. Yeah, that's that's it's from the wind. But yes, that's uh, Jeremy Clarkson from uh, Top Gear at the time. Oh my goodness! Oh, he was loving it. He was loving it. Um, you know, we didn't. I don't remember if we talked about this last week, but you know the uh, McMurtry Spurling, the single seat little Batmobile. Do you know that one? Yep. It went out to Laguna Seca and did the backwards hill climb, which is a, a newer race. The current record was 29 seconds. And, but that was a, an old 1960s formula one car that did it a formula one car, but a very old one did it in 29 seconds. The McMurtry Sperling did it in 21. Wow. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's crazy again we're just having fun and talking about good news let's jump back over to the actual article here uh somerset based ariel has revealed a near production spec concept when you're when you're hand building them in low volume you can go crazy yeah, it doesn't you can. Yeah. you can make it look like that it's a partnership with a zero project called zelv what a great name uh, zero mission lightweight vehicle and it'll be unveiled on september 4th they say while unveiling it in photographs uh, built with the assistance of uh, race partners uses the same steel space frame as the nomad 2 and has a similar rear wheel drive layout the prototypes have already been built and they're confident it can have a 115 top speed and a zero to 60 in three and a half which is that is a crazy wild looking vehicle though like just just the the, the look of it's going to sell them for sure like it's it's just it's awesome looking so beautiful the body is made of natural fiber biocomposite uh and yeah it, it's a cool one i i look forward to stumbling across that at a show uh now this one um because if you want extreme and you want to get off the beaten path can you imagine using your new energy vehicle in the war can you imagine in that? the war what are you talking about well ah uh, yes <laughs> yeah the toyota mirai <laughs> hydrogen fuel cell uh, now i don't know if this story is true but i love it and i <laughs> and i think it's hilarious apparently they just <laughs> filled it with hydrogen and delivered it they made a delivery because these fuel tanks are super stable one way trip. Well, while the use of Toyota, uh, of Tesla's as power source is admirable, it was Ukrainian soldiers' use of a Mirai hydrogen fuel cell that was extraordinary. They they built a bomb using a fully loaded hydrogen cell from a wrecked Mirai. 
and it weighed 440 pounds, so you can't just, you know, you can't use a drone. Quality writing there, my friends. Uh, it reached his target and kablooied. So. Oh, my gosh. Someone found a great use for a Toyota Mirai that was used. Good times. Good times. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So the oh, last... my goodness. That is just the craziest story that they're they're loading up a mirai as a bomb on wheels and sending it in special basically delivery. a bomb run that's what it's doing it's a bomb run it is just a bomb run yeah wow. uh, it is a lot of fun i don't know if you remember the tv show monster garage but in the opening yeah. there was a scene with a big explosion behind him and the story behind that was they were at the crusher and they said do you ever get anything cool and they said well sometimes we'll drop an rv in there and if it's got a propane tank it blows just and they go and they said "Ooh, that'd be cool and they go 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 to the hardware store and get one we'll throw it in so they got the picture framed and all that and cool guys don't don't look at explosions so he's just standing there and the problem was they'd only done it with mostly empty ones before <laughs> but this was a brand new one that they just got from the store so the fireball was <laughs> substantially larger than expected but what a cool <laughs> shot oh my goodness now, <laughs> on the now, Mark, I might have some bad news. You've heard how bad things are going for Tesla in Germany. Yes. yes. Yeah. Well, zoom out, my friend, because apparently this is the chart. That big, this little line here, kind of hard to see on mobile, is the uh, uh, the top line is Tesla Model Y sales. They are number one in EVs in Germany. Um. Well, there, that's good news, Brian. You you pulled the you pulled out a bad news into a good news story. The Model Y is the most common fully electric SUV in Germany, with over a hundred thousand registrations. Ah, that's why there's no Model Three on here. This is only SUVs. So we're not seeing uh, what the dip in Model Three sales may look like. And this isn't a a complete picture because this is just electric, just SUVs, just Germany. But that is a that is a, it is not, the line is not as steep as it has been at some times in the past, but that's a good number. That's growing steadily. That is a good hockey stick chart, as we would say in Canada. It is. Now this is cumulative. Um, so as long as it's, if it's going down, it means cars are coming off the road. But if you look at the Opal Mocha, you'll see that it is done. It is flat. Uh, Opal Mocha. All right. So thank you to AJ at Alojo for that. Uh, he does great work. Fellow rebellionaire there with the lion. Uh, yeah. So that is, oh, that's all good news. Uh, are we forgetting any good news, you guys? Uh, are you having fun? Do you, you got big plans for the weekend? What are you doing? What are you doing this weekend, Mark? Painting. <laughs> well, to my absolute delight, I have nothing going on this weekend, which is amazing because the next one, two, three, four weekends are booked, are booked <laughs> and travel. When you wipe your hand with your face saying you're booked, it doesn't sound good. It's so uh, on the 7th and 8th, I will be in Vancouver, B.C. Oh. On on the 14th, I'll be at the Electrify Expo in Seattle. On the 15th, I'll be at the Oregon Electric Vehicle Association Ride and Drive event, where I'll be presenting two panels. The following weekend, I will be in Ocala, Florida. And the weekend after that, oh, that's probably been moved. So just just one, two, three weekends straight of travel. Well, oh, enjoy travel. yourself this weekend, Brian. Have yourself a good old time. I will, I will do one or two of those things. I don't know. Maybe I'll, I did finally go see Deadpool. I was very annoyed, deeply, deeply annoyed at the ticket prices because movies are expensive and I love my family. So I paid for the ticket. So my children, three of whom are adults, uh, would go with me and have fun with me. But was it a good movie though? Was it a wonderful, good movie? Wonderful. All right. Yeah, if you, it, it's, I don't see it winning a whole lot of awards for any, for anything, but it's because it was like 90% fan service, but I'm the fan, Mark. There you go. Yep. I call that me service. <laughs> I don't know. That doesn't sound. <laughs> We're just here for the Brian service. That's, That's worse. Right. That's, That's right. worse. So yeah, it's, uh, 
It was wonderful. I enjoyed it. The movie was probably 40% cameos, but that's great. I enjoyed that too. So, yeah. So what did we miss? What did we misunderstand? I don't know. You'll have to tell me. Head on over to the Tesla Life. Check out what Mark is up to over there. They're not only doing their weekly podcasts on Wednesdays, but they also have other videos that come out throughout the week um, on smaller topics. That uh, is a lot of fun. Yeah. So, you know, um, Mark has uh, told me that for a limited time, you can subscribe to the channel for free. So that's just a limited a time. So act now. You have to act now. Uh, supplies are running out. They uh, YouTube told them the server is almost full. So could you imagine getting a message from YouTube? Yeah, we need you to stop uploading because. <laughs> but that's what web hosting used to be like. That's right. I think it was Vimeo where they where they would give you a set amount of of what you could upload because what do you think servers are free? It's like, well, I mean, kind of. What? Do, <laughs> but uh, so, leave it in the comments. What do we miss? What do we misunderstand? Stay tuned in, juicy, and I cannot wait to hear from you, clever robots. Perhaps at one of those many events I just mentioned.